How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back. In today's video, we are spectating another streamer, Zerath. He's claiming to be the rank one Zerath in NA. So I want to give you my honest opinion on what I think about Peckin Wolf's Zerath. As you know, I've been hit challenged for the past three seasons, only one trick in Zerath, mainly in the mid lane, peaking over 1000 LP. But without further ado, if you do enjoy this video, just make sure you leave a comment down below. You want to see more, like the video, and let's get into it. To the next commentary today, we are playing some Zareth versus Cassidan. Gonna... Zareth versus Cassidan. So his runes are like decently okay. The two things I have gripes with, or three things actually, is one, his transcendence. Zareth really does really well with absolute focus, especially in the mid to late game, since it gives you 30 AP when you're above 70% health. And since Zareth is such a long range artillery mage, he is always above that 70%. Uh, threshold so that 30 AP completely outweighs the 10% ability haste from Wind Transcendence. Now the secondary one is Gathering Storm compared to Scorch. Now I feel like Peck and Wolf should know this, but Gathering Storm only gets value past 20 minutes. And Zareth, where he really struggles, is in the early game. So we really rely on our Scorch damage to really carry us through that early game to do aggressive trading because like I said, Gathering Storm doesn't get valued until past 25 minutes and especially saying i know for a fact peck and wolf plays in masters plus those games tend to last for 25 minutes on average it's normally 24 minutes i think is the average game so realistically he's getting on average four minutes of value from gathering storm and it's just just not enough time to make it consistently viable compared to Scorch. Now, the other thing I saw, I just want to point out, he is running Scaling Hell. Zerath just needs to survive the early game. He's kind of like a cast in Kale, Karthus, where like he just needs to survive early. So the base health has way more value than the Scaling Health because that little bit of health in the late game doesn't even matter. It's just surviving early, so base health would be better. Be, uh... But I really like his Ultimate Hunter, Eyeball Collector. I run the exact same runes, but except for those threes that I pointed out something that can get, become out of control pretty damn fast because Cassidin is a crazy good scaler and uh I do want to point out the Cassidin Zerath matchup used to be way more favored in the Cassidin just because like when before they gave us more ulties Cassidin would just purely uh split push and we couldn't really kill 80 carries with just our ultimate but with our new build especially with the crystal scepter um with our six shots ultis at level 16 we outscale Cassidy. we're never 1v1 in Cassidy. we're playing to impact team fights impacting other lanes that like sure in a 1v1 situation Cassidy's gonna win it's it's Cassidy. like once he hits level 11 he gets a jump every like one second but in team fights we giga i mean crazily outperforms Kasten. So when I'm facing Kasten's, I'm perfectly fine just scaling and going perfectly even with Kasten because you apply way more pressure with Zerus than you can you can with Kasten. Mm. She did outsmite. Yeah, they have a level 2 advantage. Velvet's just going to win this. And they get the Kasten for free. Really nice job. Peckham Wolf's doing a really great job by uh, getting weaving in auto attacks. I just want to emphasize how important that is. It's what really won them yeah, this fight. I don't know why the enemy team is trying to fight that so hard. But yeah, they should have gave up that. Once they realized that uh, for her, rather. she's still Raptor, they should have just went to another, either, another camp. But, um, Beth, uh she can cheese Raptors very quickly. Her uh, Q has four parts to it. And versus Raptors, when she just presses all of the abilities, she kind of just one-shots it. So she just hit Raptors with all of her Qs, instantly gets it, and uh, a lot of junglers get really pissed off about that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's really junglers would never get triggered easily. They have strong mental fortitude, right? Right. Oh, that actually landed. A lot of times, so I I just want to point out a lot of times you don't want to go for like trades with your stun especially saying did you see how much mana he used he used like 60 percent of his mana with one trade a lot of times in laning phase you only want to use your wq and then just more focus on farming until your first back because you really don't have that much kill pressure especially with that doran shield so you much rather save that mana from your stun and just go for your wq trades just because you're going to run out mana if you do your th like your stun combo 
She's just going for another invade. If I can just auto attack this guy once, I can get back huge mana from my passive since I get more mana from. That is true. I think it would be a lot more value if he invaded with the Belveth because this wave is pushing back to him, so there's no real need to like stand or turret. I mean, he's staying under turret just because Belveth can rotate him too pretty Amazing fast. Poke. He's in a pretty uncomfortable position. I wonder if we can dive him if I uh, am able to shove in the wave. Yeah, they could potentially dive him. Ability, but it's not too bad right now because he's, uh, like I said, I would definitely play more for jungle rather than playing for kills in lane. The biggest mistakes I see with Zerat players is them actually pressuring people under tower because this leaves open to being ganked yourselves. But with his Belveth invading, I think he uh, he's kind of safe for the most part because they know he can... He's kind of staying on the top side of the map, which is really good of him. But realistically, like, I would just push in, look for a quick reset, or potentially invade with my Belveth, rather than just staying under tower and putting yourself at risk. Nobody's going to be here but me. Like, it looks like Belveth is just taking Gromp. Yeah, I can run bot, yeah. I don't know what this casting is doing. Oh, nice. You got the kill. Minions don't kill me, thank you. All right. This guy is definitely having a terrible time. I wanted to get that last auto attack off. And yeah, he really is. Because, like, to me, like, even though he gets a kill and it works out, doesn't mean it's the correct play. And I need to emphasize that because a lot of people are like, well, he got the kill, it worked out. But consistency-wise, I don't think this is the right play because if Kindred does actually gank bid during that entire situation, Zerat dies. And even though he has TP, it's a lot harder to come back into the game as a Zerath compared to a Kassin or other mid laners. So it's really important not to die early and set yourself behind. I never wanted to flash forward because if you flash forward, I might put myself under turret and then now uh, I can't escape with my flash out. So I really wanted to get the auto attack off before flashing. But well, I'm glad it worked out for him. Uh, early game for us. He went alternator, which is very interesting. They nerf alternator early. We're gonna be going. It's so much more value on your first back if there's two back timers. There's a the 850 gold back timer, uh, or the 750 gold back timer, which is just a dark steel amp tome, or you can do like the 1300 gold back timer with which is just lost chapter. Dark Seal is just super high value. It's just a placeholder because it's only 350 gold, but it can get as much AP as a needlessly large rod, which is just insane for 350 gold. Or, or like I said, you can just go Lost Chapter, get pretty much you can perma farm lane and never run out of mana. Ludens, because there really is no other good item for Kasten besides Ludens. It's just the best, or for Zerath, I should say. That is not true, because the number one build that I am running is Malignance. Zerath has turned into a Karthus, meaning that, like, he is so reliant on his ulti to make plays that Malignance is making his ulti on... 25 seconds shorter than what his normal ulti is so you want that ulti as short as possible even though it has 15 less ap compared to ludens having your ulti on a shorter cooldown allows you to make so many more plays on the map in comparison to ludens there's no other good items so you would go malignus into rylize and that what that would do is like the second you land your first ulti it guarantees you landing the rest of the ultis. And like I said, you're just spam doing that to shut down either their enchanter support, their AD carry. And that those are like normally your two biggest target in team fight is just killing their AD carries. And when you kill their AD carries, your team fight is pretty much one at that point. I'm kind of rocking you, bro. Yeah, like in the huge auto attack. This guy has no idea what he's doing. It's kind of crazy. The custom, not okay, Pack and so Wolf. What we're going to do is just not even touch the wave. What we're going to do is just freeze it. Yes, it's very smart. Because Kassin has no TP. He has a walk back because he's too low. And he's going to miss all the CS because it's pushing into Peckham Wolf. Because the idea is... Uh, as long as this wave is correct, I believe it's... You know what? Actually, we do need to... No, it's pushing into him. I thought it was slow pushing towards me. And I wanted him to just lose a bunch of minions but it turns out that I it's close sometimes hard to dictate your, if it's pushing into you or them it's sometimes really hard to like so. you get to know on the fly like instantly thankfully for us we're so fed to the point that i'm kind of god tier right now uh being able to one shot back wave with qw 
is ridiculously nice. strong early on. So I will give very you. big props to him. You see how he's checking fights? Like, the second you hit six, good Zeras players will always be checking top and bot constantly. We're always checking for fights. We're always looking for a uh, roam players because getting kills in your lane is nice with your ulti, but realistically, we're looking to impact other parts of the map because when you uh impact other parts of the map the chances where wind rate goes like skyrocketing above like if you get your bot lane ahead get your jungle ahead has way more impact than just getting like one to two kills on a casting every single wave nice ew casting comes back with no help this guy is just suffering this poor guy Oh my god, this cast is man. No boots. He is just like totally What is this guy doing? The oh cast is just like I, I don't think I've ever seen a Zareth beat Cassid in this hard ever. He should never I, I think that early oh play goodness. tilted Cassid in so hard, making his waist flash, making him waste TP. Yeah, if you fall really far behind versus Zareth, I, I will say Zareth is a pretty toxic thing to face. Oh yeah. Uh, and that, I want to emphasize that too. He's completely right, especially versus AD carries, because once we're able to kill someone with just one ulti combo, we just start spam ulting people on repeat, guaranteeing kills. Now, when you fall behind in Zerath, it's depressing. You just deal no damage. I mean, his abilities can be dodged, but it normally is way easier once you get like boots and stuff and he doesn't i'm gonna go with dark Steel that's where crystal rylize is the best tech crystal rylize when you're playing mid lane buy crystal rylize second item but guarantee to land your ulties yet. so we just are able to land almost every single <gasps> dude look how sad the cast and build is ever, you can easily chain it uh and another thing about getting fed on Zareth is i don't think Zareth really has that good of base damages as you can see 230 on his Q damage, but really the AP ratios are crazy. So exactly. And again, I'm just emphasizing this is why we run Scorch. This is why we run Scorch and this is why we run Comet because our base damage is depressing. It does no damage. We're so reliant on our early game damage of our runes because runes probably do about 30% of our damage in the early game. So that's why we're running Scorch instead of Gathering Storm. So when you get high AP ratios that's when the damage really starts taking off some champions have good um base damages and don't need to have the ap but zara mm -hmm, is definitely true, one of those champs where if you fall behind you're useless and that's also why he's not exactly ready. and this was why i was really kind of scared when he was pushing up so far pressuring the cast in if you fall behind early with that one early death can be so detrimental now when it works out it's great you have fun because you get ahead but to constantly be that aggressive can be so bad because there's so many times where i see junglers will just three camp you and gank you early to set you behind because like i said one death can just ruin your entire laning phase so a lot of times with zara is what you do is you hard crash two waves in you go and worry because that uh, puts you around the two minute and 45 second timer. It saves you from getting three camped and it puts you at a, at a safety net. And now once you come back to lane after warding, then you would keep it even in the middle of the lane. And that's what oh, you would try to do. Because, uh, he never really comes back. Cassidy, for instance... Totally can just because like pushing this far up, even though he has a ward right here, if he gets ganked from underneath, even if it's just Kindred, he may be 2 0 and 2, but I promise you they can run down the Zerath, especially with no five. Like, this is too aggressive. We don't know where Kindred is, sure, we know where bot lane is, I don't know where top lane is. This is just too greedy of positioning. Now, they may not punish him and. Does not mean that's the right play. Put himself against the turret there for an easy hit. Ooh, it six. looks like Bard's like coming up, but like Although it I looks like they're game. getting run down. Yeah. I killed that guy. Nice. Killed that guy too. To me, this is just like when the stars are aligning, where just like everything is working out, which I'm glad for him, which is great. But I feel like for the majority of Xerath games, you should not be playing this far up as a Xerath player. Especially in high elo. Because they uh, will punish you. This guy with everything, he won't die. He's not squishy enough, so... 
I'm just not even going to bother trying it. He needs to be a bit... This is so one-sided. It's kind of a gonna massacre. Wait for to expire before throwing out my ability because we don't want to use it when he has magic damage shield. It looks like I honestly might get ganked. He does so much damage. No, never mind. Volibear is top. Well, he's not going to get ganked because, like, you just killed him on his bot side. We know where Bell Deaths is, so realistically, I so highly doubt you're going to get ganked. Yeah, send him to the Shadow Realm. That didn't hit you? Yeah. I am. It's the same thing with our recharge cooldown. I'm going to take that tower plate, though. Thank you very much. Ari can just always dodge your ulti. The thing is that his rift walk has a cast time, so I was hoping that it would land on him before. Nah, it's too time. fast, sadly. Uh, killed him though. You, you have to predict where he's gonna land. As a passive, that just is you take ten percent less magic damage. That's what really makes him uh, strong against picks like mine, because mages. <laughs> he's so behind though. CDs to deal with cast and rift walking on top of him. That dude, over. that casting is something else. Oh I no. Paid actor, paid actor. I was just kidding, it's not, but it's kind of funny how badly that Kassin is doing. But I feel like he's so tilted. Just because you're playing a mage doesn't mean you can't just auto attack repeatedly. So. It depends on what situations we're talking about. Can we auto attack? When we're this far ahead, sure. Going great. We do want to win this game very quickly. We never wanted this game to be long, so this is the best possible uh, outcome this game could have had. Although, that is one of the worst possible throws we could have because we're giving a gigantic shutdown to somebody. Again, I think he's undervaluing how good Xerath is in the mid late game now. Xerath is such a monster. If he used to be before his ulti charges was only like four shots, yes. But like ever since they changed his ulti to do more damage to every time it hits, it's so good. Anymore. Kindred scales very well because she kind of stacks infinitely. At least Kassin's kind of running it down. Like I mean, what do you mean kind of? That man's running it. Oh my god, that is like. And I'm just hitting mid tower, and thankfully because we have one grub. So he's allowed. I just want to emphasize: you are allowed to be pushing towers like this when you know when you have information. We see Volibear top lane. We saw Cast and die bot lane. We see Kindred still in the bot lane. If you can account for everyone on the map and you know you are safe, by all means, auto attack the turret. But it is so risky, like previously when he was over here auto attacking the turret, not knowing where Kindred is, not knowing where Topside is, stuff like that, not knowing this information, you should not be risking your lead or just playing Xerath in general, auto attacking towers. This true damage is honestly doing a huge amount for us. Yeah, Grubs is kind of OP. Grubs, it takes so long to kill turrets, so... He does need to reset. I do want to emphasize, remember, you're only as strong as how much you... Uh, you're only as strong as the gold you spent. So, like, even though he has 2,200 gold, he is not that strong. He is very... He's kind of my weak right now. Tankier as they get lower plates, so. The bar is coming. It should be okay here, even if uh, you try to kill me. So I'll just walk away. Dude, if kind the thing is, like, dude, imagine if the Kindred was with the Bard. Because we didn't know where Kindred was. Like, imagine, like, Kindred ganks him right there. Like, he would have to force his flash and potentially even die for that. Level 7, dude. My goodness, man. You know what? Let's stick around for a little bit longer. What we'll stick around for is uh, my TP. He's just waiting up. for TP, yeah. I don't agree with I it, but... want to jump on me, but... Nice, I hit him and the wave at the same time, sick. I wanted to get him a little bit lower. I wonder why he built a second item. Money? Should I stick around for my ult? He's just dead. Dude, is that casting okay? Should we send help zero, to him? Six, zero. <laughs> uh, I could maybe kill this kindred top. Seeing ult Dude, you're greeting so hard. Yes, you can kill him, but like you're just greeting so hard. Nice, comma kills. Oh no, he missed first tower first gold. First. No! Oh my God. The reason why it's so bad, he'll get way more gold from the get killing first tower because you get like 450 gold than getting a single kill of only 300 gold. I missed a plate. Was it worth it? I mean, Kendra's worth Absolutely it. Absolutely not. It's not worth it. Don't try to 
change the subject. It's not worth it. You know it's not. On Zareth this early in a long time. And yeah, you should not be this fed this early. Cassidy got a massive shutdown bot lane just now. That Cassidy is so and behind that, like, resetting his gold value is so bad for himself. Game interesting and do something like this. Okay. Magi second item. I want to emphasize this to clarify whatever you want to call it. Getting Magi second is a very snowballing and 1v9 thing to do. If you die with those Magi stacks, you are setting yourself behind so far. A lot of times, especially in higher elo, you want just to buy guaranteed AP. A lot of times, like I said, I just go Crystal Scepter into Death Cap. We just want to buy the raw AP and just have the Dark Seal as a placeholder. Now, if you just don't die and forever keep those stacks, yes, Magi is crazy 1v9. You get so much AP. It's really good. But again, a lot of times in high elo, people are like, oh shit, this guy bought a Magi's and they're going in for you. And they're going to do a one for one trade and it's going to be worth it for them because you're going to lose over 15 stacks every time you die. Or 10 stacks. You lose 10 stacks on death. All I need is one kill and we'll get to the 10 stack threshold so I get more movement speed too. Yeah, a lot of people forget once you get 10 stacks, you get 10% move speed, which is crazy OP. God, we're so damn fed. We're probably gonna go Horizon Focus. Yeah, I would only, I normally only buy Mage Eyes when it's like, the t it looks doomed. Like the game just like, there's no way we're gonna win this game unless I like Giga 1v9 and get crazy Mage Eyes stacks and win the game. Or you can buy Mage Eyes stacks if your team just super far ahead and you know it's super easy to get stacks. But sometimes it's very risky. This, uh, percent damage based off a of distance and almost every single ability will have that distance. Eh, but Horizon Focus is so meh. Horizon Focus is such a meh item. It's such a, like, bait. It, it's decent. It's nice utility. But there's so many better items. Like I said, for a second item, there's, like, three different choices you can go. A, like I said, you can go Crystal Scepter. We go that. A, gives you 400 health. Makes you really tanky. B, it makes your R slow people and all of your abilities slow. So it makes it so you can land every single ultimate. Now, you may, may be like, well, that doesn't sound that, like that crazy. Remember, every time you land your ultimate, your next ulti shot does even more and more damage. So landing every single one goes insane. Not only that, like, it allows you to pick off enemies who are out of place. So it allows your team to catch up. There's so much utility focus with Crystal Scepter. And to top it all off, it's so cheap. It's 26, 2700 gold in comparison to like, um, what is it? Horizon Focus is like 2900 or almost 3000 gold. I think, I think it's 3000 gold. So it's just a, such a cheap val uh, item for such a high value item. And you get there. As, uh, your other option besides, uh, what is it? Crystal Scepter is you can go Leandre's. Leandre's is really good versus people who are stacking health, especially people who are like building Rod of Ages. Leandre's just has such high damage in that de damage department. And like I said, third item, I would recommend Mage Eyes if you're doing really well. Your team's doing crazy well. You can go Mage Eyes and just snowball and win the game. And then 20% CDR is also super nice. So. CDR is so meh on Zerath. You just want raw damage. Gonna Q you. What? I missed the cannon. That cannon, no! We have ultimate hunter as well, so I really want to be yep. just spamming my ultimate if possible. Uh, whenever I have it off. Yeah, it's really important as a Zerath to, like like I said, run Malignus and ultimate hunter to constantly be ulting like bot lane or helping your jungler. Some you can snowball other lanes. Eventually, we might get fed enough to the point that I can just 100 to 0 their squishies, like Kaden. Yeah. That's why I was saying, like, highly recommend uh, Rylai's right now, because, like, when you're so fed this early, you can guarantee to 100 to 0 people with your ulti, and they can't dodge you. Only my ultimate and nothing else. That's so yep. much fun. This guy is 56 CS to my... Yeah, that guy's in Giga and Ting. I don't know what he's doing. He's down two levels, 50 CS, like... He's not even trying. I am quite vulnerable to a gank though. Oh no, I not the wasting of E. Bard gank me. Was that Bard just now? Our vision control is honestly pretty trash, so uh, as badly as I want to just step up, probably shouldn't. Oh, that's hitting like a truck. 
Oh no, we're face tanking. Oh, he gets a kill oh before God. the ulti comes off. <laughs> she just got but like, dude, they're invading when they're so behind, which is just crazy. Like, they should realistically be like gangbanging this Zerath. Because he's pushing up. Exploded. But for whatever reason, they're trying to invade a Belvav with no prio. Landing the center of your W does 100% uh, AP ratio. So yep. because I'm so fed, um, it's going to hit really hard, even if it's not even fully maxed yet. Oh, that's going to say. Dude, they, is that Cassin even awake? I predicted your ability there. Nice. Oh my god. You see how he died when he was mid rip That's what I was talking about. That's how I thought his previous death should have been. What is the Kassin doing? Also, just to be clear, we're like 200... I think we're 200 LP like Master Tier, so we are playing inside of high elo. Some people don't... Some people say that people don't know that I play in high elo, but I figured most people know that almost every single game that I post, 99% of my content is always at least minimum Master's Tier. So... Kind of destroying. It's kind of funny because, like, I feel like a lot of times, if you would show Masters games to, like, your average league player and be like, guess the rank, they're going to be like, it's gold, it's silver. Dude, some Master games are so bad. Like, this quality of this game is just so poor. Like, Kassadin is just right trolling, their macro is trolling, everything about this game is bad. All right, uh, let's build... And especially, like, guys, if you're going Magi's... Act, uh, let me just emphasize. Emphasize? I'm using the word a lot. Death Cap is always your third item. There is nothing you can buy that's going to give you more value than Death Cap. You should always go Death Cap third. Build alternator. Because remember what... He, even he said it himself. You heard him. Xerath base damage is trash. Absolutely trash. And that's because his AP ratios are so high that we value our flat AP more than anything else. And an amp tome. Alternator sometimes... Uh... And like delaying your power spike for death cap to your fourth item is like... It's hurting you so much. Uh, really packs a punch on whatever ability you're gonna land. I don't know, they nerf alternator. Like only doing sixty-five damage at every rank is kinda meh. And somebody yeah it has a forty second cooldown, but sixty five bonus damage on landing my Q means that it almost hits for six hundred. Six hundred is like almost half of Caitlyn's HP. If she has uh if I can penetrate her uh magic resist. Yeah, penetrate. I'm so fast now because I found Magic Pen used to be so much more value on Xerath, but ever since they took out Luden's Magic Pen passive and Shadow Flame doesn't have flat Magic Pen anymore, we just value raw, uh, raw AP. Yeah, you get 100 0, Caitlyn. I want to just kill Kate. So it's really important when you're roaming two flies, telling your uh, like bot lane or jungler to go in as you're heading down. You want to tell yeah, them to force a fight? Like she's gone, actually. I think they know you're coming. I guess I'll just take tower. Yeah. I was just gonna ulti her and just try to kill her with only ult, because I think it's possible. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You have fifteen stacks there, almost three items. Just waiting for her to show up. Summer Rift is your firing range at this point. Maybe we don't even need to use the ult. Honestly, I would just pop ulti. He's playing too far away. I should have done the ult. Too far away, do your Zara. Do cross map. What is this bard doing? Is he, is he awake? Is anyone in this game awake? What is going on? Hope you can dodge them all. Yeah. Yeah, Jin's Zara is kind of impossible. Side, so we can both use our ultimates to really. So I do want to also show, like, during these ultis, it's really good to kind of, like, guide Risk Caitlyn's path because like if you put it behind her it forces her to run back towards your team so you have to give like Caitlyn's like options on where she should go Hope you can so see how see how you put his ulti like right here 
this is a bad placement of his ulti. It should be more behind the Caitlyn to be like, all right, you can either just straight up run into a Zerath R or run back into my Belvev. And it doesn't matter because she dies anyway, but placements of your R's are really important. Jamal. Yeah. Do a lot. We probably would have never killed her with only our ults because uh, she did have flash there, but now she has no flash. So the next time will be a bit easier. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Your Valibear is broken. Oh, nice heal, I guess. Oh, there is oh, crazy. You actually won that? I didn't expect you to win. Let's just TP on this. I wonder if I can help this guy. No, you cannot. Oh, he lets the sun though, Pog. Got that guy. Hit him with Horizon. You know, it looks like he's doing a lot of damage. He'll be doing a lot more damage with the Killed Death Cap build and Rylai's. Nice. Also, the damage to Kindred, too. Nice. I Good shooting. To use Good shooting, buddy. Good shooting. Of, of an easier time killing. So, I'm glad it's working out where, like, his stuns are landing. I do want to point out how dangerous this can be. A, you shouldn't charge your Q outside the range. Because, like, when you're charging Q, it slows you. In every team fight, you should either always, if you have it, instantly ulti. If your ulti is not up, you should always walk up W first. You don't want to walk into a team fight slowed. So you always want to walk up W her, so A, it would lower. Oh my goodness, bro. And to either guarantee your stun or guarantee your Q. Also, the damage to Kindred, too. A really nice shot. Very impressive. Wait, what do you do for this boy bear? Easier time killing. Cause like even for this, even though he's running a straight line, I'm glad, but you should always like W E. No one's perfect, no one can land every shot, so you should always try to oh make it to where it's almost guaranteed with the slow. E. Your casting is just running it. What is this man doing? <laughs> oh my. This Kassadin oh my needs goodness. to be reported. This poor Kassadin dude. <laughs> I have 25 stack magis already. A little bit dis. If he had death cap right now, he would have 600 AP. Because I wish I could just save my ultimate to kill the Caitlyn, though. My goal. Rise of Focus is such a like bad item to buy a third. Always buy death cap third. Do. It's probably best for me to go uh, death cap next. Always, always, when always, always. When I finish death cap, the Medjai spike becomes that much better because it's. A it, he even knows. He even knows how much value you get out of it from a fully stacked Medjai and death cap. That's why Horizon Focus delayed his death cap with such a troll pick. Such a ridiculous amount. It's worked out because he's so fat, but like it's not the right play. AP that it's just gonna benefit from Rabidon's death cap passives. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Preach, preach, king, preach. Four twenty a hit, and then every single consecutive hit deals fifty damage. Exactly, exactly, that. exactly. That's why Riley is so pretty, good. Pretty nuts. You can stack up the damage so fast. And you get five shots of it too. Oh, I e At least that guy dies though. Remember when we said about W and then pressing E? Yeah. And these types of team fights, guys, right here. The second he gets to a safe distance, like I would honestly like. I mean, to be charging Q during these fights. I would honestly just walk up a tiny bit and probably start my ulti. Because, like, they're more focused on getting out of the team fight. Yeah, you have the Volibear chasing him now. Probably die here, no? That's why it's so important to get to a safe part of team fights before you ulti. Explode him? Oh, they are so behind. That is so sad. I'm sad that I couldn't kill the Caitlyn again. She healed there. Also, I saw the Volibear Bear coming, so I knew that I had, like, no time to actually aim. I need to really just shoot off all my shots and immediately get out. So, There's I mean, FF vote. Unsuccessful GG. with killing the Caitlyn, but definitely a successful game versus uh, Cassidy. I mean, Dude, that yeah, Cassidy was empty. You can't tell me otherwise. It was kind of influential with the Belveth uh, killing, Yeah, that early game was. I mean, we solo killed him and kind of rolled him on our own afterwards and 
made that lead become way worse for him. Yeah, but like I said, it's very scary that like it worked out, but like one gank mid lane through bottom, which wasn't warded, could change that lane so fast. Which it works out. Was it the right play? In honest opinions, I don't think so. I'm glad it worked out where he snowballed, but I'd much rather play for a more guaranteed uh, lane and a little bit safer. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that kind of stomp on Xerath inside of high elo as well. Uh, I think Xerath is pretty damn fun to play. I'm surprised people don't play him more often, but I am the guy that kind of plays. People don't play him more because like you have champions like, A, you have to kind of, have people to follow up on b if you don't know how to face against a yasa yon akali uh akshan all these like super meta picks zerath is very hard to play into it's a very hard to just pick zerath into those picks now if you're just fa playing against like a Huey or like some other immobile like mid laner it's a lot easier because you have a lot safer of a lane but a lot of meta mid laners are really hard to play into plays more uh out of the ordinary picks in high elo in fact i would we had to give it to him like this man plays everything i've seen this man pick some wild shit mid lane that you're like what are you doing he makes it work good for him confidently say that i'm probably one of the best if not the best Zareth mid in the entire na region i don't think anybody even plays it that often besides maybe the um i know there's the hot e-boy Zareth um Zareth one trick hey that's me but i don't know i do want to say when he was recording this video i haven't played ranked this season i like i only started at the very start of the season but then i took like a kind of like a four month hiatus so i wasn't playing the solo queue ladder so he probably hasn't seen me this season so he's probably whether or not uh questioning whether or not i'm even playing right now but we're back in the grind uh if you guys haven't seen i stream every monday tuesday thursday friday at 1 p.m eastern Reclaiming back to challenger reclaiming the throne i don't know what elo he is but yeah sadly i was I, i'm only like 300 lp mastered we're on day seven of climbing so uh give me about another two weeks and i'll see you guys in challenger I'm pretty confident with my zerith so let me know inside the comments what you guys think do you think that i'm one of the best zerith in na or am i the best zerith let me know uh He's okay. Yeah, he's, he's a decent he's a decent there. There's a lot of like builds and like combos he needs to work on with the Zerat. He's not a bad Zerat at all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next commentary. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody. Well Oh yeah, we destroyed a Zero matchup, so on the to the next commentary or welcome to game two. Ah, right. great intro. Yeah. Round of applause. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> I have the same exact jungler, but he's playing Wukong instead of Belveth this time. Nice, also nice. Volibear. I don't like Volibear as Zerith because no, uh, Volibear is just OP. Can, uh, just ignore my stun and go in. Wow, dude, you seem faster than I thought. He has, he has, uh, if you notice, uh, he has fleet on him, so he's running really fast every time you procs it. They changed it to where uh, a zero can proc on hit effects. You get that minion, so I might, might as well just give it. Pretty, pretty so easy. again, he's pushing really far up, which is like, he's not going to gank, get ganked at this timer, but if you're ever pushing up two tower as Zerath, junglers kind of mental note that and be like, yo, this guy's being too aggressive. I'm going to put him on my like gank list. So like, you should always look for a second wave push. Don't push your wave too hard yes, yes. and crash the second wave rather than oh, the first. God, what's going on? Oh no, cover your eyes. It's fine. That was, it's not good to mess up your board. Yeah, because like I said, we want to crash this wave as fast as possible. That's why you kind of like, not slow push, but like decently push the first wave. So it stacks on the second wave, but it crashes on the second. Because the second you kill this wave, you uh, want to ward right into river where this like, sc where Scuttle is. And it's a perfect gang timer. Useless, so I have no idea where Volibear is. Oh, it's Volibear jungle, yeah. pretty classic matchup, Zerath versus Azir. It's very Zerath favored. When, when I first started trying to go pro and I played on a team, this matchup was played so much. I don't think many Heck people. Heck, try to go pro? I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, pick me Zerath. I like Zerath. Pick me in into his ear. That was like. So I want to give a little bit of insight of like why don't you see Zerath often in pro play? So one of the big reasons why we're not seeing Zerath in pro play as much 
it is for the sole reason that Azura's damage isn't guaranteed. Where if you look at like Victor, Azira, Oriana, their cooldowns are very short. It's not like as critical as missing as a Zerath Q where it's like, oh, we missed it. We gotta wait five seconds. We missed our combo. We missed our stun. We gotta wait six seconds. Where like we may be 10 and 0, but we don't land these abilities, especially on pro players, which have very complicated dodge patterns. Well, we do no damage. It, it's simple as that. You just don't deal damage where like Oriana, Zero, they, they just auto attack. They have short cooldowns. They can do their damage consistently and have playmaking abilities. Whereas Zerath, like if we miss our ultis, like our damage is just gone. Season three. Azir is a pretty old champion. It's pretty cool how unique he is though with his- like, Yeah, they did a really great job with Azir. They're nerfing him stuff. next patch though. This guy always jukes upwards so far, so hopefully I can start abusing that a bit more. Thank you. I'm so glad that he like says that because like as a Xerath player, as a Xerath one trick player, I feel like one of the weird things that goes through my head is I'm tracking dodge patterns. I track people's movement and that may sound super weird, but I take mental notes of how often you dodge up or down. I just want to say a cool note. 77% 70 of players' natural reaction is to dodge down. Just want to throw it out there. Their natural safest reaction is dodging down. I feel like it's asking like a person, are you right-handed or left-handed? And where majority of population is like right-handed, that's the same thing with people's dodge patterns. Their natural reaction is down. More because uh, I didn't really do that good of a job with some of the other trades. Maybe I shouldn't use my ability just yet. Oh, you juke downwards. You changed up. Dang it. Mm hmm. His wave is not in a good spot. Okay. Yeah, you're going to get caught, sir. Yeah, you have to flash up. If you die now, you kind of lose the entire game. Mm, Wukong wants to fight, but like. You can't lose this wave. You can't lose this wave. I really want to get my mana back. Let me auto attack you, please. Thank you. That's why I think. Okay, so like this is what is so scary a lot of times with wave management when you crash so hard early and crashes back. It's really important to keep your wave even, and this is why I do the two wave crash because we want to keep it even for the scuttle timers. If you notice, it is 3 minutes and 30 seconds, scuttles are up, but what's happening is Azir had this way pushing back towards him really hard to where he has to literally give up this jungle fight because his wave is, is in such a bad position. So that's just more controlling your wave because like if he does rotate to this jungle fight, he's going to lose like 2 waves to 3 waves of gold, which is just insanely bad in terms of XP and gold. But not only that, if Azir actually rotated to this fight and Az Azurath couldn't, he could potentially set his entire team behind because his wave is in a bad spot. Nice done. Gigantic trade on that guy. Again, I much rather to do WEs or WQs or W auto attack rather than doing a combo because like he's just struggling in the mana department because he's throwing is, uh, so stun so much. Lane, one tiny thing is that my wave was slow pushing towards me, so mm -hmm. I was more okay with leaving because I knew that the longer that the fight goes on, and if we win, uh Azir will lose more than me. Yes and no, it depends on how long the fight is, because technically it was only one wave. If the fight actually like unfolded, Peck and Wolf would lost would have lost the two waves compared to Azir's one. So in the short run, he had a 15 second window, which is correct. He did have a 15 second window to move down, but he had to instantly get back to like like I said, if that fight kept going, he would have lost like way more. The wave goes so. I have so much more HP than this guy. I, did I really break all of his potions? That, yep. that had nothing to do with anybody else. You can hyperbully uh, Azir. Am I dead? Oh my god, thank god. Azir is such a hyperscaler that he gets destroyed early. Destroyed. Where did you come from? But you're... Above you. Died, you? didn't you? 
Like, what? Volibear died and then showed up topside to gank me? Well, like, it was bad a de something? That was so random. been a decent amount of time. just immediately appeared like that. So, very good by him. I just want to emphasize that, like, he knows Volley Bear is above him in this lane. He's on his top side, so he's playing more towards his bot sides to where if a Volley Bear does come back for a regank, he can just walk Thank away from the, the bot side. And then I'm going to use the mana on the wave. I don't really care about you. Oh, Wukong's coming. Nice. Oh, I can maybe kill him with autos, actually. What did I... Paid actors! Paid actors! Oh, my God! What did I just watch? Yeah, I need an instant replay. I'm so sorry. About you. Oh, I can maybe kill him with autos. You know what he's trying to do? I bet he's trying to E back and Q forward to be fancy. For no reason. Exactly. He deserves to die. Get him out of here. Yeah, you're dead. Get him out of here. Ugh. Another solo bolo on the Zerith. That was... I was... Dude, like, Not what? Bad. I should have asked my jungler to help me shove this. Yeah, you should ask some pup push. But, oh well. I'll just, just sacrifice reset. some of the minions. I'm pretty happy Again, with the 1300 back timer, just buy a lost chapter. Yep. We burned his flash. There's a Janna just rotating mid. She has Swifty Boot. She's going to be probably coming mid a lot, huh? Yeah, Janna, like, can I just, like, complain to Tatani a bit? Janna's so broken right now. If she goes, like, the uh, Relentless Hunter, I'll come at Moosebee, Swifties... She naturally has a 400 and like 80 movement speed. She has almost 500 movement speed out of combat. That is broken. You are going in when Janna's rotating. So yeah. Luck, she just gave that when no mid prio. I'm, I'm saying Wukong should have just gave that. I need to get my R, dude. Yeah, they should have given that. He should have pushed the wave. Remember, like, if you guys can't contest, like, dragon or void grab stuff like that, get leads in other places. Push in your mid wave. Like, get CS. Find other ways to get your lead if you can't, like, rotate to a fight. All right, he has ulti. Yep, At he's going to tell him look bot. You should ping that he's on his way. I Let him know. Low HP. Yep, just ulti this. Nice. We'll just hit his ear to do a little bit of poke damage on that guy. It's good to guarantee it. I don't think they needed him, but like yeah, I, 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 I would have rotated really down Ulton and done the same thing. What happened is because Janna roamed, it was super easy to dive that guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of risky now because I have no um, flash. So if I get a Z... Yeah, so like he can definitely get a zero combo. He does have his ward on his bot side, so he should be more hovering on on this side of his map, the bottom side, rather than top side. Into the Volibear, that's bad. So I'm hoping that I predict him. And whenever I see him immediately start shuffling, I just immediately throw out my stun. Because there's a chance that I can hit him mid-shuffle, and it won't stop him. He's it's pretty him fucking out. hard, because, like, you gotta remember, Azir can shuffle diagonally. He can do, like, any sorts of combos with his but EQ. If he's stunned, Most he Azir's rarely me. ever just EQ straight at you. This is chill. We'll just play super far away. This is one good thing that Zerath can do. He can just farm from such a safe distance. I am confident that nobody else is here. Like, if they're just going to be doing this to me, then I'm just going to sit super far away. I'll sacrifice some minions and make sure that I don't die. Unless they decide to dive me, and that would be unpreventable death. It's good not to die. It's kind of scary if you lose too much CS for this. Oh, good. I was worried. He should start hard pushing, though. Like, there's a fight about to unfold. He needs a hard push for this. Because his ears are rotating down. Should hard push the lane. Should hard push the lane. Hard push the lane. He needs to do it faster. He needs to do it faster. Because he's like in river. He would make him lose way more CS yeah, if he actually just committed to the push. Down to kill her because... Well, like, you saw the volleyball and Jenna, all that, and you didn't see Azir, so you have to assume that Azir is walking down. Yeah. Azir is back mid. We have no vision. They're not doing that. Nice. You cancel back. Should be a free kill. Nice, good shots. 
A lot of times with Xerath, when you're ulting bot laners, you should have predetermined shot patterns. Your first R should be directly on the target. The second one is directly behind them where they run towards their own tower. And the third one should be right in front of them because like a lot of times people, first time they don't notice that you're hitting them. The second time they think they're cheeky by dodging backwards towards their safety net, which is their tower. And the third time uh, they're gonna dodge pack towards, uh, away from their own tower because they think they're smart. But if you shoot it really fast, you don't want to give them time to think. Okay, another kill for us. I'm happy that I landed that because uh, Jan is really fast, so I could have totally missed those, but not the best Zerath in NA for no reason, right? Hey, that's my title. There's actually a Zerath one trick in EUS that's a challenger. I looked up like Zerath challenger and it seems I can't. There's not very many websites that easily show rankings based off of what they play, but there's somebody called Jukester in EU West that yep. plays Zerith. So I guess there is a challenger Zerith in EU West. Yeah, give me a month. In NA, though. I need... Hey, 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 give me a month. Relax, relax. I wasn't playing. If I land my stun, he should die. I'll do it when he goes for cannon. Dude, he's gonna get a shuffle. This is so risky. Do I need to emphasize how risky this is? Because, like, even though he has flash, dude, if Volibear ganks him right during this timer above him, he's dead. I see emphasize that. Like, this is, like, to me, so risky. For, him, but I don't know. for not I enough reward. So much money. Where is the Volibear? I flash now, so I might be able to outplay. Yeah, Zero's pretty low. Maybe. They may not go for it, but... Dude, what is this here doing? There has to be a Volibear here, right? What will happen is if he shuffles, I can maybe land stun. <laughs> He's a paid actor. He's I'll a paid die. actor. You you were able to land your ultimate even though you're dying, so there's not much. But like, dude, here. why does he just do that way earlier? Why is he waiting so long? All right, whatever. Also, whatever. Janna hit me, so it went on to Janna. Yeah, it's good I went to Janna. So depressing for. Azir, because now oh, he gets dude, Azir, what are you doing, so bud? Also, where are the junglers at? Why are they never yeah, ganking him? The the dude, I feel like the second anyone ever sees me playing solo queue, I'm getting ganked. Even though if I'm playing towards my tower, people are being so aggressive with their gank patterns towards me. It always feels so bad if the bounty that would have allowed you to uh, make up for the massive gold loss that you're in is put onto somebody else because now you're just like, oh, cool. Now I'm a spectator for most of the game. Yeah, I mean, if you can give it to your support, that's really good. I killed him mid, sh mid like, uh, shuffle, and I still got hit by it, which is interesting. Yeah, once it goes off, it goes off. When he was dead, but... you did, you, did you know Zerath used to have a... He could death... Um, like, as you're dying, if you press WQ as you're dying... Um, it would still go off. It doesn't do it anymore. It's really dumb. But you saw like how Zero press R as he died, it still goes off. As Zerath used to be able to do that with his W and Q. Wow, he channeled it way too early, so. Ported. Should be okay to clear this. Gigantic damage. I don't think Jan is gonna be killable. I think it's too hard. I think I'd rather just try to kill Azir. Oh my god. See you later, solo bolo. Yeah, once you get to five and L, you're kinda of just able to do whatever you want. So many Zerith solo kills in my last two games. And I got his flash. A zero Zerath matchup, it's so Zerath favored because you, you're stronger than him early and you outscale him. The only thing a zero has on you is he has playmaking abilities with his ulti. Now, he will come back with his ultimate, and I'm sure he's upset, so he might want to ulti me. That should be enough to get that plate. They got all six grubs, so this game was much more challenging to get the plates for myself. Yeah, grubs are so broken early. 
Let's buy level two boots. I think being faster might influence us uh, being safe versus. Yeah, the early top. magic pen is so high value, especially the move speed. So, could be uh, pretty good for us. I'm almost level 11, so. But you see how his ulti is like almost 90 seconds long? If you had Malignus right now, it would be a 70 second cooldown. Definitely gonna wait for 11 before casting my ult. There's no reason not to. Garen you can get your ulti down to like a minute is kind of with Malignus. Us, huh? Really hard actually. And it's Lethality Yorick against Garen instead of Bruiser Yorick. Aren't you just gonna immediately die every single time he jumps on you? Yes, but Yorick can kite it, but also, like, Yorick will shred Garen. I feel like the analogy is always better on That's Yorick. Good. Oh, look, he's jumping on you. Yeah, all he has to do is land the cage. Where did he go? You gotta find him! Oh, you found the Jaina. I lost vision of the Volibear, and I honestly have no idea which direction he went. All right, that guy's half HP now. Landed a good hit on him. Uh, because Garen's winning top, he might roam from top through our jungle to me and kill me, so. Just a thing to think about. One thing I'm learning about Peckham Wolf is I just need to play like a Psycho, apparently. I wish I could, I, I don't get punished like this. Your eyes, chat. Oh my god. I need this needs to be a fucking PG like rated R film. There's no shot. It's he's a paid actor. Oh no. Azir. Azir, no. I think, I think we need an instant replay. Dude, A okay. Let me just emphasize how bad this is. A he insta cues. He doesn't he doesn't press E and then Q. He just presses E onto the- he Q's, then E's. You're- you're supposed to E, then as you're about to get to your target, then Q to extend the region of your Q, but like... And then he would just literally instant die. Oh, oh no. my god, Zier. Zier, no. no, Zier! Oh my god! Now, let's pretend he did hit that on me. I was actually kind of okay with getting hit because... I mean, he did have flash and everything, so it wasn't, like, that much at risk. But, like, a lot of times, like, what if Volibear was there? What if their uh, bot laner was there? What if their support was there? We don't know. We don't have the information. I think anybody else was nearby. We don't know that, though. That's so risky. And we had minions, so I felt safe. No! That's why you W then E. Yo, 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 yo. But you see how easy it is to get his draft flash when he's pushed up? You see how so simple it is to Ginkgo Zerav? That's why when he's pushing up this far, it's so scary to me. It's giving me so much anxiety that he's pushing up this far without information. That he's just assuming people aren't there. Please, dude. Do not let this Janna do this to me. Okay, good. Nice. Gigantic kill. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I have my ultimate coming back up. Same build every single game. No. I hate it. I feel like in the nicest way possible, he has like the most like mobile fire build ever. I guess I was wrong about it's just what game. everyone's building. Is it right? Absolutely not. I'm able to die to the Garen. I'm happy that I'm wrong. Do I really want to ulti this yes. Janna? I feel like she's kind of useless. Kill the priorities in these team fights as a Zera player is A, kill their AD carry. B, kill their enchanter support. Those are the top two priorities in every game. If you can kill her Janna to where she can't ulti in fights, it takes away so much pressure. Garen ulted at the wrong target. Press R, press R, press R! Oh, they're hitting so hard. I really miss that. That guy dies. 
Okay, so a lot of times in these team fights, you don't want to you you can slow shoot. It's like okay, but realistically, like you don't want to slow shoot just because it gives them more time to think about how to dodge properly. When you put people into a panic, they have less time to properly think about how to play correctly. So like you should really just put uh like uh put your mouse a little bit behind them and shoot your army so it forces them to either run into your ultimate or get hit by them. But he's kind of holding it and kind of rooting it for himself. Sometimes, oh, maybe I shouldn't even wait for it. Sometimes I feel like if my last shot probably won't kill, which it probably wouldn't have killed Aphelios, I, uh... No, you should really learn to ulti faster. Like, you, you should learn to ulti faster because, like, you do want to impact your the fight with your regular abilities, too. So a lot of times, like, you can A... Just shoot whoever they're focusing, or B, shoot their primary tar shoot the primary uh, targets to get them as low as possible to make sure they can't impact the team fight. No, wait, let me kill you. Well, like, oh, you did okay. I think there was a lot of positioning issues, especially with wave management. Again, this was more meant to be as an educational video, and if you do these enjoy these types of videos, make sure you leave a comment, like the video, and I do hope you see you guys in the next one. Peace.